Hello there, this is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake, and this is the 2021 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S. You'll notice I'm doing this a little bit differently today than videos in the past because I broke my tripod last week and don't have a new one yet. So you're getting the GoPro special on a selfie stick. But regardless, this is the Volkswagen ID4. It is not the brand's first fully electric car that started with things like the e-Golf a few years ago, but it is their first mass market electric car. And I've driven two of these already. I drove a first edition, which looked basically like this one and was a rear wheel drive model. And then I drove the all wheel drive version about a month ago. I reached out to Volkswagen though to see if I could spend more than just 20 or 30 minutes with the car and they sent one over for a week. And of course the first thing I did was take it on a long road trip that was longer than its battery capacity. So let's talk about what this 2021 Volkswagen ID4 is and then we'll talk about how it was as a road tripper in particular. Now before we get too far into this, please take a second, subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube if you haven't already. We really, really appreciate all that support. All right, and with that, on to the ID4. So like I said, this is the rear wheel drive model. So you've got a single motor on the back axle here and it makes 201 horsepower and 229 pound feet of torque. It's worth mentioning these cars weigh 4,665 pounds. So the rear drive single motor model is not particularly quick. It is over 23 pounds per horsepower if you're following along with the whole pounds per horsepower power to weight ratio thing that I keep going on and on about. If you want a little bit more power and torque and thus a little more speed, you can get the ID4 with all wheel drive. It will add a second motor to the front axle that's good for another 94 horsepower and 110 pound feet of torque. And I've driven that model, I'll link you to it right up here, but it is still not particularly sporty. It is definitely quicker and you get the benefit of all wheel drive, but in any case, Volkswagen is not building these to be the GTI of electric crossover things. They're just meant to be kind of an car that is fully electric. Really, this is more like if you think of an electric Tiguan over anything, that's kind of what you're gonna get here. Now, Volkswagen rates the ID4 rear wheel drive at 260 miles of range. This has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and they rate the car for 260 miles of range. If you get the all wheel drive, that figure drops by just a hair. But regardless, 260 is the figure that they rated for this car. When it was first delivered to me, it showed over 300 miles of range. I suspect someone had charged it all the way up, reset all the trip computers, and driven very, very, very carefully because the car is not rated for that sort of range. When I've been driving it with it reset, it's showing 261, 270 miles of range at full charge. Now, the other part of all of this, of course, is charging the car. Volkswagen claims you can charge the car from 5% to 80% in 38 minutes, and that is with a maximum charging speed of 125 kilowatts. So even if you go to a charger that can shove power to the car quicker than that, some of the newest Electrify America stations can support up to 350 kilowatts for cars like the Porsche Taycan. This car can accept it at 125 kilowatts, which is pretty typical for a car with this much power and battery capacity. Now I mentioned I took a road trip and that road trip was longer than the car's battery range. So we had to cover more than 260 miles and we went somewhere that doesn't have a lot of charging infrastructure when you get there. I went to the Outer Banks in North Carolina. So yes, you have more charging options available on the East Coast or the West Coast versus the middle of the country, but in this case, we got to a certain point where we were going south and then past that you really don't have any DC fast chargers. Let's do a quick little walk around of the ID4. I'll show you a few things about it and then we'll get behind the wheel and talk about how it is to drive and how it was to road trip. All right, so starting with the front of the ID4, there's not a lot going on up here. The only thing that's really interesting is the Volkswagen logo. It does light up as well as this white bar here. All of this lights up as kind of running lights at night. Now you'll notice you do still have what looks like a hood. It is a hood. It is not a frunk. There's no storage space up here. It is all the electric drivetrain and other associated components going on. So your only storage is in the back, but we'll show you that in just a second. Go ahead and pop hatch and they're all power hatches and you can see there's decent storage space going on here if I move my camera equipment out of the way you can actually lower this cargo floor so you've got a false floor this is great if you want to store things underneath for security keep things out of the way you can pull this and have it slide all the way down so you get a little extra height kind of nice if you're looking to put something heavy in there too so you're not trying to support everything with the weight of this uh this piece of faux floor 
but you can also have it up here on the top. This is really great to do one-handed. You can have this up here on the top and uh, get a flat floor if you want to fold the seats back here. It does have a power hatch. You'll notice this one makes a... It's a funny squeaky sound. When it closes, something to do with the power strut over there. So might just be an issue on this particular car. I think this is kind of an early build. The other thing I want to talk about is the key. And Volkswagen sets this up to be pretty easy. You don't need to put the key anywhere. It is a typical keyless go sort of fob. And the issue I have, I don't know how much you can see it here. This key is shiny piano black plastic and there's no real buttons going on with it, which is kind of a theme of the whole car. I don't know how well this translates on camera, but it is already super scuffed up close when the sun catches it just right. And this car has like 8,000 miles on it at most. So this key is going to age very poorly. And these are actual buttons you can push, but they don't give you the most feedback. So really kind of a goofy key. Obviously you can just keep it on your, on your person in your pocket and it will work. You've got your typical sensors under the door handles and these don't move. You just pull a little electronic release here to open the door. Now, moving inside, this is another thing that we have to talk about because this is one of my key frustrations with this whole car. And that is the fact that there are like two actual buttons in here. Everything else is a touch button. So first of all, just here's a nice little showing of the front seats. This is the lighter gray interior. Uh, you do have actual buttons down here for your seat controls. So you've got your power seat, you've got your adjustable lumbar that does go up and down and then in and out. You've got memory seats and a standard uh, massage feature of sorts. Kind of nice for road trips, actually. We did enjoy that. Now, looking up here on the dashboard, you do have these light controls right here. And you've also got your defrost controls by your lights, which is a strange place to put them, but that's where they are. Now, moving back over here to the door panel, this is where things get a little weird. This is your series of controls for your uh, door locks, your mirrors, and your windows. These are all touch buttons. You can tap at them and you can hear the car kind of making little boop noises. This dial just doesn't stay in any one position for your mirror controls. And then you've got your mirror defrost and your mirror uh, fold. These are things that you twist the knob for, not uh, push. And then right here, you've got your window controls for your two front windows. But then you notice this rear touch button thing. If you push this and it turns orange, now these two switches control the rear windows instead of the front. So this will control the front window, push the rear, then you control the rears. This is really fun to try and use while you're driving without taking your eyes off the road. Let's hop inside the car here. So again, once I am in here, you've got your screen, your typical infotainment screen here, and then you can see behind the turned steering wheel, you've also got a gauge cluster screen. All you have to do with the key in the car, in your pocket, whatever you're doing, is push the brake pedal and the car will turn on. So that's it, we're on. You'll notice it automatically connected to Apple CarPlay that is wireless in this car. I'm gonna go back to the main infotainment home screen though, just so you can see what this looks like. It is actually pretty easy to use and it's got these big square buttons for most everything you want. You can set up your, your favorites over here if you want them, I don't have anything set up. The interesting thing about this screen is it takes a very firm press to register a touch or a swipe. So kind of interesting there. I'm gonna go to the built-in navigation because this is something that people asked about while we were doing this road trip. So if you put in a destination and this is gonna be, I'm gonna put something in that's ridiculously far because this car has a full charge. So let's do Orlando. Orlando. Uh, let's go to Orlando, Florida. That is 756 miles away from here. What the car will do is it will automatically route me and include, as soon as I hit start, it will calculate the route and it will include charging stops along the way. So it's figuring out where we're going. And then you see here, it has calculated a few charging stops along the way. So it's showing that it wants us to stop at two different Nissan dealers and then a Sheets. 
Uh, not necessarily what I would try to do. I'd probably try to f stop at places that had faster charging versus 19 kilowatts. So you can tap on that and it'll find some other results uh, that you can pick from. So I would try to find something that could charge a little faster. I don't actually know this route, so maybe there's nothing else that's really good along the way. But in any case, it worked for us. It found us some Electrify America stations that were pretty nice and easy to use. You can tap over here in the corner and get your climate control system. There are smart climate options where you can say, basically, I want my feet warmer, I want my feet cooler, I need quick AC, a clear windshield, whatever. Or you can go to classic climate and just use a typical climate control system. Now, here's what I wanna talk about that makes this car kind of a pain for the sake of driving around as just an car. This is all pretty easy. And when you look down here, you've got some hard buttons, hard buttons in quotes. Right here, you have the parking assist menu, which will bring up everything here. You've got Klima, which brings up climate. You have driver assistance right here. And then you have your drive modes, which like I said, this car is not particularly fun to drive. So I just left it in eco the whole time. These controls and the hazard buttons light up at night. The screen obviously lights up at night. You'll notice though, there's also controls here for your temperature, your volume, and your passenger temperature. These controls are touch sensitive and have no backlighting at night. So when you are driving at night, I'll show you, here's what this looks like. You can't see anything. It seems like a bit of an oversight by Volkswagen to have everything else backlit except for those. I'm gonna move up here to the roof because you've also got a series of controls up here for your, your door lights, your dome lights. And this little guy here is a swipe touch system to close the cover on your panoramic sunroof, which this doesn't open, it's just a big piece of glass, but you can close the cover on it. And this is another thing that I don't know why this had to be a touch button. It's kind of difficult to figure out what you're doing while you're using it and driving the car. So again, not my favorite. And then finally, we'll move down to the steering wheel and the gauge cluster. So you do have this gauge cluster screen here. The nice thing about this cluster, you can set it to show all of your driver assistance really large, or you can see driver assistance and navigation, or you can see navigation details. Now this is showing details from the built-in navigation system, but if I am using Apple CarPlay, it will also show my next upcoming turn this sort of format, it looks the exact same if I'm using Apple Maps. That is something new that Apple has allowed the car manufacturers to incorporate and Volkswagen has added the software to do it in the ID4, so that's kind of nice. Now looking at the steering wheel, this is the other important thing of note here. These are all swipey touch button sort of things that are actual buttons. The wheel does push in a little bit, but you'll notice the car's off now. I took my foot off the brake and it doesn't really move that much. So when the car is on, there's haptic feedback, which is just like on your iPhone where you push something and you feel a click. That is something that's kind of a simulated bit of feedback and you get it with your cruise control settings and your uh, audio controls over here. So this is all touch-ish. And then I mentioned these headlight controls and ironically your defrost settings over here that are also a touch-ish. So this all works but it is tremendously confusing. It is tremendously difficult to figure out, doubly so if you're driving and you're on the move. So this is one of those things where I just think innovation for innovation's sake is not really something that's very helpful here. All right, so that's the basic overview of the 2021 Volkswagen ID4. Let's get on the road and talk about how this thing is to drive and how it is as a road tripper. All right, so driving the 2021 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S rear wheel drive. Uh, like I mentioned, I've driven two of these before. One was a rear wheel drive car that I drove for all of about six minutes. And the other one was the all wheel drive model that I drove for about 20, 25 minutes. At the time I said the rear wheel drive car was a little too slow. It was not gonna appeal to the enthusiast market at all, which of course Volkswagen is not really trying to with this car. This is supposed to be kind of the general family car sort of vibe going on. But if you want a little more power and torque, the all-wheel drive model does have that. What is interesting is that my feelings about the power and torque of this car have shifted a little bit having put 600 miles on it. We, we put 
this car through its paces as a road trip vehicle. So I was on Interstate 95. I was keeping up with traffic. I was really, you know, doing my thing, not really trying to drive to conserve power or conserve battery life at all. I was just driving it like a car. And even though it only makes 201 horsepower and it weighs 4,655 pounds, that is not a lot of power for a lot of weight. Every electric car seems to be really heavy just because of the weight of the batteries. Uh, it doesn't necessarily feel slow, slow. The interesting thing is that you basically end up with kind of one rate of acceleration. It is punchy enough off the line, it is punchy enough around town, on the highway, it kind of is what it is for passing maneuvers. It doesn't feel as slow as a gasoline powered vehicle with the same power to weight ratio might. And I think that's largely because you're not dealing with gears and downshifting and, and trying to zing the motor into its power band. You've got all your torque available from zero RPM, so you can really just stand on it and it will go right away. And even right here, if I just punch it, it feels punchy enough, even though, you know, it's not really, really that fast. As far as how the ID4 rides, it is definitely a little on the stiff side. It feels like they could fine tune the damping just a hair for the sake of making the ride just that much more supple. I wouldn't say this is the most refined ride in the world, but it's not bad. It's not overly stiff. It's not too harsh and it's actually pretty comfortable both around town and on the highway. So kudos to Volkswagen. I think the suspension is generally pretty well tuned um, aside from kind of the fine tuning that you might get with like a luxury brand compared to a more commonplace brand like Volkswagen. The one thing that I don't like for the sake of this being a driver's car over anything is the steering. There is not a lot of steering feel. You really don't have a lot of idea through an off ramp where the front wheels are. Again, Volkswagen's not trying to make this thing appeal to the enthusiast minded among us, so for most drivers, you're probably not gonna care. Now, the one thing I really wanted to talk about was road tripping this car over anything, because obviously, if you're driving it around town, you'll never worry about your battery range or anything. It just kind of is what it is. You charge it at home or go to a local fast charger, and that's that. But road tripping, as with any electric car, is something that's new and scary to a lot of people, so let's talk about it. So we left Washington DC with a full battery. Car initially said 300 miles of range, which was erroneous based on someone else's reset of the trip computer, but the car's rated at 260 miles and it was showing 261 or 262, something like that. So I wanted to stop a little more than halfway so that we would have enough juice to get to the destination in the Outer Banks and then make it back to the fast charger once you leave because that is an area where once you get past a certain point, if you know the area, once you get past Newport News of Virginia, you don't really have any DC fast chargers available. You just have some seven kilowatt level two chargers that are fine, but you're not gonna use as part of a road trip. So in any case, we routed ourselves using the car's navigation and the plug share app. I checked one with the other. We routed ourselves on the way down through Newport News. We stopped at an Electrify America station that was in the middle of being repaved. The whole parking lot was being repaved, but it was at least accessible. So I was able to sneak my way in there. The whole station worked. I plugged in, it took about 35 minutes and we walked over to get lunch. The only place that was nearby for lunch was a Golden Corral. So that was a really delightful mid 1990s childhood experience for us. And then we were back on the road. Once we were at my friend's place in the Outer Banks, I used the travel charger, which plugs into a regular 120 volt household outlet, and that was able to add three or so miles of range per hour I was charging. So that was fine. I just had the car sitting in their driveway and we were able to unplug it and use it, go on you know little trips around the Outer Banks. So it wasn't like I had to let it sit there and juice up. It was just whatever I got was kind of an extra benefit. Then on the drive home, the car took us to a different charging station, took us a little further north to Richmond, Virginia. So we blew past Newport News and we stopped at a different Walmart with a different Electrify America station to charge back up there. And again, we spent about half an hour there. We had some errands to run anyway. There were some other things to do in the Walmart parking lot. So it wasn't that bad. I would really love to see these charging stations be placed somewhere with cafes and coffee shops. So you have somewhere that's a little bit more like a Sheets or a Wawa to get some food, get some snacks, get some coffee, 
on a road trip, I'm not necessarily looking to stop at Walmart and kill half an hour of my, my day. I'd much rather stop and get a cup of coffee or something. But in any case, the charging experience was completely flawless. It was very easy. I had set up accounts with Electrify America, ChargePoint, and EVgo all before we left the house because I've been driving several different EVs. I didn't know where we'd be taken for the sake of charging the car. So I wanted to make sure I had accounts already set up. But if you do, it's really easy. You just hit your Apple wallet or your NFC Google wallet if you have an Android phone and it's truly tap to pay, tap to start charging. It was the easiest process. And in both cases, we used Electrify America stations that immediately went to charging at the car's maximum charge rate of 125 kilowatts. So it was not like what it says on the wrapper is different from what you're gonna get. It was nice that it actually could charge at those higher speeds and you know meet the, the claims that Volkswagen has set up. The other thing worth mentioning with Electrify America in particular is that you get three years of free charging at any Electrify America station with the purchase of a new ID4. It is not mileage limited. So it is truly unlimited DC fast charging at Electrify America stations, courtesy of Volkswagen. Electrify America is a Volkswagen owned, sponsored, whatever you want to call it, company that more or less came out of the whole Dieselgate scandal. And part of what they're doing is giving you a big incentive to buy an ID4 you get that three years of free charging. So in my case, the two charges I, I made didn't cost me anything at all. That was pretty nice. Now, as I'm coming up to a red light here, I took my foot off the throttle and you'll hear the electric motor wind down a little bit. There is regenerative braking in this ID4. It is not particularly strong. I've been driving it everywhere in B mode, which is the stronger of the two modes that actually has regen braking. And it's not, it's not enough to stop you completely. You do have to use the brake pedal. And the complaint that I have there is that the regen braking is easy enough to figure out based on how much throttle you, you give or take off. But when you go for the brake pedal, it is the weirdest feeling pedal. It is very artificial and I really don't know exactly how much braking I'm gonna get every time I hit it. So kind of an oddball thing there. The, the pedal feel is not really that good in this car. As far as other things going on, it is a totally fine car. Volkswagen has built this to be an car for the masses. Like I said, it's kind of a, a Tiguan-esque vehicle that's just fully electric. And in that case, it does succeed. It's good at just being a car. But the one thing that I truly find unforgivable in here is the way you interact with the whole car. Everything is a touch button. Everything is impossible to deal with if you try to keep your eyes on the road. It's worse when it's at night because you have some things like these volume buttons that aren't lit up at all. And I mean, I know people who I think would like this car and I can't recommend it to people because this is really tough to deal with while you're driving at all. On the highway, if you've got the driver assistance stuff enabled and working, it does work very well. So it will keep you in your lane. It does pretty good adaptive cruise control. Sure, you can take your eyes off the road for a second and figure out how to put the back windows down or figure out how to adjust your volume, but you shouldn't have to do that. That's not good user experience and interaction principles. So kind of a bummer that that's what Volkswagen is doing and where they're going with, with their HMI, their human machine interaction setup. Um, I really think it's, it's dangerous and kind of silly because they've historically been very good at it. And that is it for this review of the 2021 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S rear wheel drive. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you're looking to connect with us elsewhere. And if you'd like to connect with other LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, please head over to outmotorsports.com. We have a whole community over there and we would love to have you join us. Till next time, please stay safe, be well, We'll see you again soon.